So this icon bar is um, just giving us quick launch um, icons to go off to various different areas, either in SharePoint or externally. So uh, the Bing search icon, that's going to take us straight to Bing. We've got a library, click on that. It opens up our library um, site that just happens to be in SharePoint as well. But the power of this can be combined with the unread email. So you can see here that within the icon bar, I've got the unread email icon, and it's showing me that I've got five unread emails. And that goes off and it looks at the exchange, and it tells you how many unread emails have you got. So you get that little call to action when you first visit the site. You arrive at the site, it says, this is how many unread emails you've got, and it gives you a little prompt to, to click on something. So if you have a problem with people aren't, aren't necessarily checking their, their emails, or they're, miss, they're missing emails because they're, they're kind of, they have to go through another process of logging in somewhere else, or or what have you to see emails. With this, they can just see that they've got a couple of unread emails, and they can click on it, and it'll open up um, their email window, and they, they can just go straight through and check their emails. And then when they've, they've read them, they'll come back, and that number would have then, then changed um, or, or disappeared if they've, if they've read all the emails. So that's the unread email that just sits really nicely within this icon bar. So I'm going to continue to talk about the icon bar here. So the power with this is all driven from one, one list. Um, at the top level site. So if I put this icon bar on, say, the staff page, staff will also see these icons. And the real power of it is that I can actually say, well, actually, on this site, I only want to show particular icons. So if I click through to the staff site, it's the same icon bar, but we've got a phone book. And that, what that is, it's just a SharePoint list and staff directory. But it's all powered from that same list. But if I'm on the top level site, I don't see phone book. So we'll have a little look at that. So here's the icon bar. And we can see we've got a couple. And we're saying with this phone book, this is where you need to link to. And this, these are the sites that I only want to show it on. So I only show it when I'm on that forward slash staff site. So you can kind of you can hone the icons to only appear in particular areas. So we're going to have um, we're going to add some more in. I'm going to add the Bing images one. I'm just going to edit that. Now you can set that to be minus one to hide it altogether. So if you had a, a link that you only want to show at certain times of year, you could just leave it in the list and then just hide it using minus one. But in this case, we're going to show it. So I'm going to say 11, just so it appears uh, to the right. And the same with this. Let's give that 12, so it appears to the right. So again, we can see we've got Bing Maps are going to show everywhere. But this Bing Images link is only going to show on the staff site or any underscore layout site. So let's just see if that's worked. Here we are, Bing Maps appearing there, no Bing Images. Go to the staff site, and there we are, we see Bing Images and Bing Maps. So we have the link to both of them there. So we could go through and, and add that on every page, but if we look on the students page, we haven't got the icon bar. Now what would be really powerful is if we had the icon bar on that page, so students could jump straight to their email, um, or they could jump to the uh, a link straight to the library. Uh, and the same with subjects, you might have a particular icon that you want to appear in a, in a particular subject area. Now you could go through and add the web part into every single into every single page, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put it in as part of the master page. So I'm just going to change the master page, and what I've done is I've just created another master page which has the bar, has the icon bar in it, which we'll see as soon as I've clicked OK, because it'll appear there. So if I jump back to SharePoint Excel, there we are, we see it twice on the page, because this top one here is actually within the master page. What it does mean then is if I click on students, the icon bar is already there. If I click on geography, remember it wasn't there for the with the glossary, but it's there now. And you may have noticed in that list, I had an icon to say, to say, only show on the science page. And that's what I've done. So we see this, this videos um, link here. So that could go off to an internal media library or, or YouTube or whatever. Um, but that only appears on that particular subject library. So you can control all these icons all from that one place and say, right, actually, only show it on these particular student pages or subject pages or something like that. I'm just going to add another one completely, just so you can see the process from, from start to end. We're going to have a link to the calendar. I'm just going to attach an image. And it's going to go to our calendar 
within SharePoint. Uh, and you can say whether it opens in a new window or current window, and you can say where you want it to appear. So I'm going to leave that as, actually I'm going to change that to 50 so it always appears on the far right. Okay, and there we are, we've got calendar shown, we can see that straight away. And then it just, you can see that it just links through to our, to our calendar. So rather than having to, if you're on this subject geography site, for example, rather than having to go back to the top level site, navigate back to find the calendar, you can click on calendar within there and you're straight back to where you want to be.